Right, I've um, thought I'd have a quick look inside one of these Solik motors, take it all apart, see how easy it is, what sort of size of the bearings, etc. And um, yeah, so I thought I'd put it on video so you can have a quick look. And this is this is what it looks like together. Super solid, really impressed with these so far. So let's have a quick look in here. Most of you know what all these components are and how they differ from a normal brushed motor. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, I thought I thought I'd just run through it really quickly. So we've got our end cap here. Um, blah blah blah. You might have seen these. Some some have a some have a little controller on the top, little switch here. Do the speed controller again. You've got these little long pins here. Again, the main the, the main meat of the uh, the windings here. Here we go, and you can see right down the bottom there, you've got another one of these bearings here, just there. And let's say we stay with the bearings for a second. So let's have a look at the let's have a look at the motor tower. Again, these are slightly different to the any of the others that I've come across. Again, what the main difference I get well top and bottom top and bottom bearing is really handy to have. It's real keeps it nice and steady. But these um, these bearings are much larger than the normal bearings. Um, much bigger so and I, I can see that being just only a good thing I can't see it really being a bad thing it's you know they're more more reliant more resilient to to any damages anything getting inside them as well so let's I mean this, this is an old SHS I mean you can see you can see how look they don't even have a bottom to cut costs don't even have a bottom um, bearing there but um, you can see the sizes there look how different they are so it's not only it's not only taller, but it's also wider. So I've got one, got one round here. Let's have a look. Here we go. So that's the that's the Solink bearing there, and this is like your standard bearing. Yeah. So quite a difference. Quite a difference. And that and that and I think they've done that in order to 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 minimize damage on some of these on some of these motors it only takes from what i've noticed it only takes a small bit of damage to one of these bearings and bearing in mind you've got four of these four of these built in um it only takes a little bit of damage to certainly this one which is i think it's the most important um the one that sits in this in this shield here it sits right there and it just takes a little bit of damage on this for it to for it to cause a motor to start heating up or perhaps a motor to not to not run at its its stated rpm so um, and it's so difficult to find out i mean to literally find find out you'd have to you have to run it really slowly and you can normally you can't hear anything but you can normally feel it when a when a bearing when a bearing isn't working properly you can feel it really clunking it really sort of rattles along and and you can it's not smooth at all but that's that's one way you can check if you think you've got a bearing out but anyway let's let's um let's push on from that right again the esc controller again this is most probably the you know the brains of it i took this off this a real pain in the ass to take off that all of them every single one i've come across unless you're really competent in soldering i i'm certainly not um it um i mean i know how to use it i've got salt but these ones i had to put i had to put some flux down i then also had to mix in some leaded solder as well to get these three points off so you've got three points which fit where's my little pointer so you've got one two and three there you can see on some of these i've still got i've still got the solder in there which i'm going to have to take off i'm going to have to wick off um and then that fits that fits over like that down and i'm wishing i'm hoping that what they're going to do in in the future I'm hoping they're going to create some some metal um, like you know like a like one of those bullet connectors or something that you can just slot on you know and you can take off and slot on take off slot on. I imagine what they they use solder and it, it improves efficiency in the motor. So who knows who knows? But it needs to be done because there's a real problem with with um, brushless motors in that when you want to change where is it. When you want to change the pinion of a brushless motor, you ideally you need to take this out. You need to take the main magnet out, which which you've got the long shaft running on there, and then you you need to fit it. You need to push that, you know, put that into a vise or something, or you can use a little bit of a hammer. You cannot, you cannot. When this is all fitted together, 
when you're trying to change when you've taken this when you've taken this pinion off and you're trying to fit a new one you cannot hit it with a hammer it's impossible you will you will end up breaking something you will end up forcing this back too far and it will then damage the rear the rear bearing it will damage the rear bearing and then all of a sudden the motor will start heating up and it will cause you all sorts of problems so that is the only way that well well there is another way so you can either take that out completely which is a ball lake of a job you know it's a good hour to do it really well it takes me an hour you know and I've, i'm not a bad solderer but you know it does take me an hour you've got to get all the kit out you've got to do it all um you can you can when you've taken this off you can just sand it very very slightly so just sand this down very very slightly so when the ore or you could actually sand that out this 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 metal would be a lot softer a lot easier to sand than this um, or if you've got a Dremel Dremel gear, you know, you can make this slightly larger. And in that way, um, obviously, with something like this, it's only a few quid. So, um, um, again, again, the, the Solent one's really good. I've, I've been using this in and out, and there's no damage on it at all, really. A little bit of a shine, but you expect that. But anyway, um, what you want to do is just sand, either sand this, sand that, and then just let that slide over. You can maybe do a couple of light taps with with a hammer very very light taps just to knock it on like that but any more than that and you're in you're in new motor territory or not new motor territory you you know the worst you're going to do you're going to you're going to bust a bearing like that um this these ones here um these light ones actually have a speed controller fitted and i think it's obviously a um, you can see where I, where I took this out i had to i had to drill out there because these little screws were so fixed in but what you invariably will do is that so you'll have a bearing that fits in there and then you'll have you'll have that that fits over over like that that's it there like that that will fit over like that and then that will fit onto like that and then when you're hitting this with a hammer that will cause pressure to either come down and it will break these components that sit on the speed controller and then it it could also screw up this bearing here this bearing here and then if that's if that's screwed then again it's not too bad i mean that's that's you know a couple of quid to replace you know the speed controllers a little bit more to replace maybe a fiver and then then hopefully you you won't go through and uh, and mush one of these mush the bottom of these but um these are pretty much protected from from those but um yeah and you've also might have noticed on these even though there's no speed controller advertised on these motors and there's no little switch on here underneath you will see a little there is the little switch here and i don't know how much longer they'll have this on there i imagine they're gonna they're gonna twig that people you know can change the speed so yeah you've got a little 20 percent reduction on these brushless ones as well on these um, um on these light so link light ones so yeah you could easily flip that flip 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 and then you know just adjust your speed so all you have to do is take off the end cap Ooh. take off the end cap like that four screws one two three four take off flip that get a little get a little pin flip that like that or you can see yeah and then you're done put that back on but there that's a quick overview a really really quick over and i brushed through that so fast um on on what's inside one of these motors again you know if you're getting any heat problems if you're getting anything like that you know there's likelihood that you that's there's damage being caused by by um the fitting of the pinion gear you know don't don't hit that with a hammer Re honestly don't hit that don't install your pinion gear like you were installing on a brushed old style motor you know you will damage you will damage the internals okay enjoy